Good evening. My name is Charles Starks. I'm here with Kentucky Tenants, just like everyone else that has these shirts on. Kentucky Tenants, a tenant-led organization fighting for Lexington, where everyone has a safe, high-quality, affordable housing, and we are here to talk about a Tenants' Bill of Rights. I've lived in Lexington since 1984. I didn't realize how <clears throat> much rent was until I got divorced in 2006. I was living in Metathorpe for a while, probably about 35 years. It wasn't too bad. It started getting worse. There was an increase in everything but the pay scale. It got so expensive, I had to leave Metathorpe in August of 2021 after 35 years in the neighborhood. I had to move, I moved over to Arlington Lofts on Limestone. Five months ago, I was down with medical issues, couldn't work, fell behind on my rent. I was able to get help <clears throat> with rent assistance, but before I was in eviction court. Getting help saved a lot of mental stress because I was going through some serious medical issues at the time, which put me at serious risk. Now I'm here to help any way I can. Giving back is my field to help. There's a lot of people out there that are in the streets with children that are forced out and have no help. That's wrong. The cost of rent is totally out of sight. It keeps rising with no help to stop or slow it down. Landlords treat people like dirt, and renters have no control. For the past year, Kentucky Tenants has been speaking with hundreds of tenants all over Lexington about their struggles with housing. Two-thirds of people <clears throat> said that rent is unaffordable for most. This May, rent increased in Lexington was higher than any other city in the United States. Many tenants are facing eviction, and even more are dealing with landlords who refuse to make even simple repairs. When we asked about the solutions, we need tenants said legal support, policies to help with high cost of housing, and policies that hold landlords accountable for if they don't take good care of their homes. We need a tenant's bill of rights. We need stronger anti-discrimination laws, better eviction protections, a landlord registry, <clears throat> and seats for tenants on the board's commissions. We are all about to hear other tenants about their stories and what exactly we need. We are going to fight to make everyone in Lexington have a safe, high-quality, affordable home. We hope you will fight with us. We need a tenant's bill of rights. Thank you, Council. Hi, my name is Hassan Gaylord Parks. I am a member of AY Tenants. I am a member of KY Tenants and my family rents here in Lexington. I am 15 years old and I believe we need a tenant's bill of rights. I live with my mom, little brother, and sister. I also have three brothers in college. And last December, my mom found out we were losing our home. Our landlord decided he wanted to sell the house so he was evicting us. I have a lot of good memories in our old home. Maybe my favorite is last Christmas right around the time we found out we had to move. Everyone in our family was there, all four, of them. Our, all four of my brothers, my sister, and my dad. We mostly just relaxed and played video games and had a Nerf gun fight. And my oldest brother, Amir, always wins, even though I have the most Nerf guns in the house. Having everyone together under the same roof just uh, felt safe and it felt good. I was also able to be a teenager. I was 14 at the time, now 15. But I didn't feel like that for the eight, next eight months of this situation. My mom used a housing choice voucher or section eight. She couldn't find a landlord who would rent to us. I was constantly worried if I was going to have a place to sleep the next month. Also like art, sometimes I just wanted to draw, but I couldn't because we had to pack or figure out something with the eviction. I know it stressed out my mom too, because one time I was in the car with her, we were going to look at a house she wanted to move us into. She was so excited to show us the house, but we didn't end up getting it. The landlord wouldn't accept our voucher, and I could tell how stressful it was for her. I knew she was already dealing with so much other things going on, just like my little brother, who has special needs and a brain shunt. 
It wasn't fair for her or to any of us. I'm 15 years old again. I shouldn't have to worry about these kinds of things. I should be thinking about what I want to do after high school and where I want to be. My mom and dad design and print clothing and athletic wear, and I'm thinking about studying business to follow in their footsteps. I also have a good singing voice and I love music. If I'm angry, I listen to music. If I'm frustrated, I listen to music. I've thought about studying music in college. That's the kind of stuff I should have been thinking about. Instead, the eviction distracted me. I couldn't sleep peacefully. That's probably why I'm a little short. But seriously, I was tired all the time. I was tired at school and my grades dropped. My teachers noticed, but finally we found a new place. My mood changed and my grades got better. One of my teachers even said, you can tell Asan is like a different kid now. Kids shouldn't have to deal with this. We shouldn't have to suffer at school or anywhere because landlords are mistreating our families. Because there's not enough afford affordable, my bad, affordable housing. If I was in charge of the housing system, I would make housing affordable for everyone and make sure our homes are safe and comfortable for the people living there. If I could, I would buy a home for my mom so we would never have to worry about this again. I don't have that power or money right now, but you have the power as city council to make it easier for people like my mom to find housing. You can pass a ban on source of income discrimination so the landlords have to accept our vouchers. Our money is just as good as anyone else's, whether we use a voucher or not. That would be a great start and we can't stop there. We need more anti-discrimination protections for people with evictions on their records, for people with criminal histories, for people with low credit scores, for immigrants, and you have the power to make that happen. We need you to act. We need a tenant's bill of rights. Thank you for your time. My name is Stephanie Hensley, and I'm a leader with Kentucky Tenants. I moved to Lexington and Corbin, Kentucky in 2021 because my friends and family told me that I would be able to find more opportunities for my family. I was hoping for a fresh start here. Last August, I moved into Matador North Apartments in the first district. We were excited to move in because before that, we were at Salvation Army. And then my kids got COVID, so we had to stay in a hotel. When we got there, we learned that the Housing Authority approved an apartment for us to move in. Section 8 told us that the apartment was safe, but they wouldn't let us come look at it because the kids had COVID. When we got out to Matador, they took us to the apartment and the electric wasn't even on. Even though the office said with that they couldn't move us in without it being on, we had to slip, we had to sleep in the living room with the balcony door open because that was the only way to stay cool enough to fall asleep. Then in October, the air went off. I went and told the office because my fridge wasn't even getting cold either and they didn't do nothing. A month down the road, the tile fell out of my shower and the toilet broke and the dishwasher stopped working. We had to keep milk in the freezer, but it still went bad. So much of our food went bad. I had a heart attack from all the stress. Four months, the air kept going off and on. All this time, I was telling Section 8 how bad it was, and they kept saying they would send out an investigator, but never did. I remember my son drenched in his own sweat because they wouldn't fix the AC. I remember him throwing up and having a hard time breathing because he was sick from the mold. I had a lung infection from the mold. Then I started getting sick, so I went to the hospital and they said I was allergic to the mold. The health department came out and tested the mold. They told me that it was black mold. They said that it wasn't safe for me or my unborn or my kids to live in. We ended up leaving, living out of a hotel. We had to leave our clothes, toys, furniture, and baby stuff, and the food was bad, so we couldn't take it. So we lost everything because the owners of Matador didn't want to fix nothing in our apartment. The maintenance guy told us every time he asked the office about fixing our place, the office would send him out to fix another apartment instead. I finally moved to a new place. I don't have transportation, so I walk to pay my rent. It's five miles round trip. We get charged $45 extra because we don't make three times the rent. That doesn't make sense. 
Recently, we were late on rent on top of what we already owed. They added a $100 late fee. I can't afford that. I need that money for formula for my baby. Now we might get evicted. It just seems like it's one thing after the other. No mom should have the thought in the back of their mind that she might be homeless with her kids soon. I'm not the only person this is happening to, despite housing being unsafe and landlords not taking care of our homes. Rent is rising faster in Lexington than anywhere else in the country. We need more eviction protections. Every tenant in eviction court should have a lawyer right now. Only 1% do. But nearly every landlord has a lawyer. That's not fair. We need the city to pass the right to counsel so that tenants have a fair chance in eviction court. The current rental assistance program is helping so many people. I'm currently waiting to hear if they can help me. But that money will run out someday. When it does, we need the city to find a way to fund rental assistance permanently. We also need a landlord registry. My, own land, my old landlord shouldn't be able to get away with what they did to my family. And right now, there's usually no way to find out anything about a landlord before you move in. We need a, re a rental registry to hold landlords accountable and let renters know more about the people they rent from. Families like mine are counting on you. Mothers like me are counting on you. <coughs> we are going to fight for our rights. We need a tenant's bill of rights. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joyce Bolton. I am a resident at the Connie Griffith uh, Tower, and I'm also a member of Kentucky Tenant. Just give me a second here to get it together. I'm a public housing resident at Connie Griffith Towers and a member of Kentucky Tenant. I moved to Connie Griffith Towers in August 2021. The last place I lived wasn't the best place. I would have to walk up 15 wooden steps to enter my apartment. Um, one day, I didn't have hot water to take a bath. I had to take my laundry downstairs for laundry service. I fell down those 15 wooden steps. I had brain surgery and two strokes. Um, I had to move. The only place that, was, that I could find that open was Connie Griffith Towers. Living there has, in, has been stressful. The first night, the alarm system went off at 5 a.m. in the morning. It startled me. I jumped up out of my bed and my bed broke. It hadn't been put together properly. It hadn't gotten any better at the Connie Griffith Towers. The same alarm goes off at night two to three times a month. And when it goes off, it stays off, stay, it goes on for five to 10 minutes. One day the unit above me had a leak. It leaked down into my light fixture in my hallway. I was afraid to turn on the electric that I might get shocked. When they finally came to fix it, I asked them could they change the light bulbs and they said $12 per bulb. Instead, for which it should have been the, re the landlord's responsibility, I took light bulbs from my lamp to replace those light bulbs. That's not all. My toilet is broken. It wobbles when I, uh, it wobbles when I uh, sit on it. When I asked them to fix it, it didn't help much. To this day, anytime I go to the toilet, I'm afraid I might fall and hurt myself. I always pay my rent on time. Mm, just a minute, please. I always pay my rent on time, but right after I moved, moved in to the building, they showed me the wrong, I put my rent in the wrong mailbox. 
They didn't show me the right mailbox to put it in. I got charged $30 late fee. Like I said, I had brain surgery and I needed more, um, I needed more support. Someone should have showed me which mailbox instead of assumed that I would figure it out. The biggest problem we have there is roaches and bed bug. I'm on the resident council at the Connie Griffith Towers. This problem has been going on since 2014, guys. 2014. This is 222. So, and still, it has, it has not been fixed. That's not right. They should already have taken care of that. The Housing Authority recently updated rules for, uh, that uh, all repairs cost more money. We only found out about it when they put the note in our door. We just like, uh, we're just like other tenants across Lexington. We're dealing with landlords who won't make repairs, can't afford safe housing. We are losing our homes for one reason or another. We need more protection. The mayor appointed Housing Authority Board City Council to approve it. Right now, there are no one at the public council, public housing board that we know that would, that to make happen, but the people that are on the board can't tell you about the story that I have told you. People on the board don't, ha don't have 200 neighbors who's living in public housing. I do. We need tenants on board to make these decisions about housing, like Housing Authority Board, Affordable Housing Board, and more. You have heard our story. You know what we need. Now you need to act. We need Tenant Bill of Rights to make it happen. I'm, speak, I'm the last speaker tonight, but you see, I have many more with me. We will keep showing up until we win the Tennis Bill of Rights. Every single person in Lexington has a, should have a safe home that they can call, that they can afford. We are fighting for the future we need. We hope you will join us. We really do. And we are the bees. We swarm. We, um, we, we, we do everything together. So if you're going to make honey, let's make it together. Will y'all please take our Kentucky Bill of Rights in consideration and let us win and so we can all live in harmony. Thank you. Thank you.